All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to another episode of the Remarkable Coach podcast. As ever, I am your host, Michael Pacheco. And today with me, I have Russell Harvey. Russell Harvey is the resilience coach. Uh, He's a dynamic and engaging leadership coach and facilitator, public speaker, managing director, NED, podcaster and radio host. With over 20 years of experience in learning leadership and organizational development, Russell has specialized in resilience and VUCA for the past 18 years. He is passionate about positively affecting 100,000 people by the year 2025 and has already impacted 43,202 individuals. Russell, welcome to The Remarkable Coach. That's lovely. I like it. So yes, the remarkable coach and the resilience coach. There you go. You know, it works well. It works well. Uh, thank you for that introduction. I've, I've listened to that a few times. It's good. It's like I keep listening to it and going, oh, yeah, right. Wow. OK. All of these things. And I think <laughs> right now I might be up to 43,000, about 302 ish right now. So nice. it, it goes up a little you, bit. You know? you're, keeping, you're keeping very specific track. Well, so yes, ish, essentially, you've just, um, so that where it all comes from is one of the dimensions of being resilient is having a purpose. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that's mine. I thought about it and Mm -hmm. it came from things and and it it started with, oh, do you know what? I just, I mean, I want to go do do good in the world or, okay, right, let's hone it. I want to do positively affect and then also as well, partly to do with marketing, this lovely idea of make it smart, Russell, S-M-A-R-T, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's when the numbers came in. I'm not naturally bothered about coming the numbers. But that's why I just try and keep an eye on it. Some of it is finger in the air. Sure. Um, but, you know, I just think about what have I done recently? Uh, who have I spoken to? Um, you know, where have I gone out to? What's the likelihood I might have had an impact on some other people? Um, so I was doing a speech the other day, and I think it was 342,302 was the number, essentially, <laughs> in the it. speech. So, yes, they go up, essentially. Fantastic, man. Um, so for the, at the beginning of this show, I always like to just invite uh, my guest to tell us a little bit more about yourself in your own words and why it is you do what you do. Thank you. Appreciate that. So I'm aware that I've just always, from a very early age, been fascinated around human behavior. Like, how come we do the things we do do and we don't do the things we do? Like, and potentially a little bit more about myself. Like, how come I do or don't do things or make these decisions or find this difficult or find such and such easy? Um, And so um, I knew from a reasonable um, age, I think in my 20s, uh, 1996, I was teaching in Hong Kong. My wife and I went traveling around the world for a year. And whilst I was teaching in Hong Kong, something magical was happening. I didn't quite know what it was. And then it's people learning. So I was like, ah, I don't want to be a teacher in a school. A wife's teacher, she's brilliant, but just school teacher wasn't for me they're saying oh i think i want to be a trainer so you know came back from traveling and then it was literally starting the career from there to go actually what do i need to get qualified in uh and that culminated in yes that intro those that decades of uh, time about learning leadership organizational development so today i describe myself as a coach and a facilitator um i live in leeds in the north of england god's own country is what it's described as so if you've never been to the yorkshire dales then you must go there. You must go there. Um, I've actually been to a Leeds United game before. Ah, brilliant. Uh, yeah. they, uh, I don't know when this will go out, but I've literally just checked. I'm not a Leeds United fan. I'm a Liverpool fan. <laughs> um, but let Leeds won today. So okay, I've got, there you go. I've got a lot of loads of uh, Leeds friends. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, I, I came home with a, I've got a full match kit and a, and a, and a mug. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So when was that then? Oh geez, I was working. Uh, I was working at McAfee, and and I would travel to to Aylesbury a few times oh, a wow. year. That's um, where I went back, to college in Aylesbury. In the day. Yeah, uh, cute, <laughs> cute little town. I like Aylesbury. I like Leeds too. Um, but it must have been, gosh, two thousand six, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a minute. Yeah, yeah, it would have been. Yes, I, I went to Aylesbury College. Uh, okay. So yes, Buckinghamshire is the county. That's where I was born and brought up. So there we go. Isn't that amazing? That right Aylesbury yeah. would come up, you know, 
in this. So, um, yeah, just always interested in human behavior. And so when I got the coaching bug, that was that was on top of all of this stuff around learning development. It's like, um, yeah, there's something about this coaching, this facilitation piece that just uh, plays to my strengths and works for me. So um, it's essentially who I am. There isn't a, like a work Russell and a not work Russell. I'm just me as much as I can be all of the time, essentially. That's my mm -hmm. intent. Yeah. How did you land on coaching? Presumably you didn't, you know, come out of uh, university as a coach. How did you, how did you land there? Yeah. So it was one of the sort of organizations that there was a utilities company, uh, st still is, I think I can't remember actually if they've gone now, but N power, uh, the, the things change in the utility industry an awful lot. Apologies N power, if you still exist. Um, <laughs> and it was just there was a course it was a one day workshop on coaching um and i went to it and just you know mind blown about oh okay so this is an extra layer of like behavior change things that you can do there are two ladies that were running it who had worked at virgin virgin somewhere uh and you know talked about richard branson and his style uh -huh. um was a coaching style and i remember uh, my boss at the time ian mason he deserves a mention um he, he just saw me come back from this this day's course uber enthusiastic you know bright light in my eyes of like this this thing is brilliant it's amazing and he just you know he sort of uh nurtured it from there and took it from there uh and i just knew that coaching was the thing for me from there really very nice very nice and and tell us about your clients who who are your clients who do you work with yeah so i suppose to start with anybody that's got like the job title of head of hmm? you know or operations manager operations director or you know head of staples head of finance head, head of something you know sure. um and it's you know the the ideal client is somebody that's just starting to think about the fact that hmm is this it could there be more or mm -hmm. I'm doing some of the similar things um, mm -hmm. and I think I've lost my mojo mm -hmm. essentially or I'm doing same old same old or my team's not performing and I'm just not sure if I've got the oomph for all of this and I, and I just need to just think and reflect about who I am. Mm -hmm. um, that is the ideal clients, essentially. Um, and also, not always on the negative. If there are people who are sort of going, I've got the job title of head of and it's going really well, they're also ideal clients. Mm -hmm. to go, how do we maintain it going really well? But there's probably more value in those that are just going, I think like I'm I'm wading through treacle or it's just this is harder work than it needs to be. There's so much change. Mm -hmm. I used to like it and I think I'm fed up with it now. And, and those then um, I work well with on them deciding and really understanding what their strengths are mm -hmm. and what really motivates them and what their passions are around this leadership role. And sometimes it leads to them um, getting promoted or, um, you know, just completely staying in the same role and really getting excited about it. And sometimes it leads to them going, ah, it's time for me to pack it all in and go traveling around the world and, you know, become a fisherman or something like that, you know? Well <laughs> uh because you know there's well, there's one gentleman right now that uh, was senior in it um and right now he's in vietnam and sent me a video message the other day um because he wanted to travel he wanted to become a coach himself and never mm -hmm. felt that he had the uh confidence to do so mm -hmm. so actually whilst traveling he is now also just doing little bits of coaching online so it, it can the outcome of it uh is um fancy word multitudinous i don't know where that came from there are multiple outcomes <laughs> to um you know being a client of mine um so yeah somebody's got the job title of head of and yeah. is just thinking ah uh, i think i think i've had enough or i'm not sure or i just feel as though this is too hard now yeah. i love it i think that's um yeah i mean that, that's that's a good let me put my words together in my head first <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that um that you work with people not only, you know, on on their, you know, perhaps call it career development, but also a little bit on on personal development, right? If someone yes. feels like maybe they're they've got burnout or or yes. what they've been doing for the last decade isn't right for them, 
um, it's it can be very difficult. I'm speaking from experience here. It can be very difficult to say uh, to say goodbye to the cush, comfy, well-paying yeah. corporate job. Um, I mentioned before I used to work at McAfee. I used to work at Intel. I did that for about a decade and decided finally without a coach at the time um, that it wasn't for me. And I took, you know, a three year sabbatical and became a professional touring musician. Aha. Aha. There you go. I did wonder about the, uh, yes, the guitars in the background. I didn't, I didn't mention them because I've been on other things before and then suddenly literally there's two hours has gone by as the person talks about their guitars so yeah oh. nothing but <laughs> I, I, I won't i won't be too self-indulgent but um but yeah i, I think i think coaching like that is, is a, it can be a bit underappreciated um and it's not as common i think um but but certainly there's there's room for that and again i just i, I speak from experience as someone who worked yeah. in fortune 100 companies for a decade of my life um before i just realized that the, the cubicle wasn't for me no and, and for me it's like so i i do feel like i feel like i'm saying a lot of business buzzwords a lot of the time and my intention is to really unpick for each individual what they mean so for me resilience i always define it as springing forward with learning mm -hmm. rather than bouncing back because mm -hmm. we can't go back you know, um, and so it's a case of supporting people to be in this lovely word of thrive mm -hmm. rather than coping and surviving. So when somebody feels like wading through tree cool, oh God, there's got to be something more to this, then they're more likely coping, surviving or even less than that. So you start to ask these people these questions like, so, you know, imagine you were thriving. What's going on? And yeah. a lot of the time people can't answer that. They have to think about it a lot. And one of the dimensions of being resilient is your purpose. So sometimes it's literally, yes, you're loving your job role. So, and can you clarify for me what your leadership purpose is? Mm. And others will turn around uh, and sort of say, you're not loving your job role. What's your leadership purpose? And th those, their answers to those questions can take me into a variety of ways. Mm. And um, it's not always the case, but I've just remembered another client that I had that um, they were working at, massive sort of engineering project and they were a geologist um from their university days and they sort of said actually do you know what i want to um stop taking things out of the ground and destroying them from an engineering point of view mm -hmm. and i actually want to put them back into the ground and grow them so they shifted from massive you know engineering projects to um they were working on a um, oyster farm on the coast cool you know it's it's just you know that was their shift that may not be where they end up sure. but me asking them all these questions about you know what your stresses are what you want to do what's your purpose you know what's thrive to you and then it, for them it was like do you know what <laughs> do you know what i don't think i believe in what i'm doing ah. that's a hard that's mm. a hard that's a hard uh a hard thing to land on yes Yes. And and as you said a few moments ago, it is very, very difficult to um, then come completely out of your comfort zone because many people are going, well, I've got this corporate life. I, the vast majority of the time, marriage, kids, house, mortgage, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, absolutely that decision to go, yeah, but me chasing these things or believing I've got to do these things, it is making me unhappy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, so, you know, I either have to work mm -hmm. on this word resilience for me to be as happy as possible with the circumstances that I'm in and maybe try and just add some other factors in to my whole life to make mm -hmm. me feel better. Or it's a case of, do you know what, I think I need to go and have the chat with the partner okay. of, I think I need to make a fundamental change. Mm -hmm. You know, um, how can we, you know, as a couple get there essentially yeah. um so yeah it's just you talk about comfort zone stretch zone and panic zone a lot uh and actually how can you put yourself into the stretch bit uh, mm -hmm. as much as possible interesting talk about uh talk about vuca a little bit um i think that that's a that's a term that a lot of people are unfamiliar with yeah so 
it, once again, there's going to be a whole raft of buzzwords now. Uh, so just be prepared. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, it's not uh, my model. I, I came across it. I came. The reason I'm the resilience coach is because of my last permanent role was that company called the the co-op group. Uh, there were the cooperatives all over the, the world, but the co-op group in the UK is quite large. Uh, and a number of years ago, I was working full time and uh, they got themselves into a real pickle. And that's where the word resilience in acronym VUCA started for me. Okay. So imagine that the world we live in is volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. Okay. VUCA. Uh, and so it is a good way, a better way, once you unpick it, of sort of saying change is constant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need the resilience piece because change is constant. So when you unpick behind the scenes of like the definitions of volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, um, you start to um, understand more what we mean by change is constant. And then nicely, there's the same an acronym about how you face into it. So you need vision, understanding, clarity and agility. Mm -hmm. And when you unpick all of those they're linked heavily to what resilience means. So the full gamut of what I do is how to lead yourself and others well in a constantly changing and evolving world. I love that. What now? Now, so tell me again. What are the? What's the positive side of that? Because yeah, I yeah. so vision I with volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. I didn't yeah. know about the other side. Yeah, so sometimes it's called VUCA Prime or VUCA 2.0. So that's how you face into it. So a vision, and that is, that's not talking about like a vision statement. That's actually using your eyes, huh? okay? Situational and awareness, sure. that you are open and you are curious and you are looking around to sort of see, literally holding your head up, looking above the parapet. Mm -hmm. It's imagine that if you're in your organization, it's being curious about... Just, just imagine that you're in the uh, the company head office and you're standing in the car park mm -hmm. and you're just going, I wonder what's going on in that building over there. I wonder what's going on in that building over there. Mm -hmm. Are conversations happening in those buildings which could be helpful to me or a hindrance to me in my job role, in what I'm doing? So situational awareness. Um, if you imagine the idea of like whitewater rafting, mm -hmm. you know, it's a case you're looking around for what's the thing that we need to be aware of? It's going to happen. The understanding piece is that uh, is linked massively to emotional intelligence. So you need to understand that you have to feel comfortable feeling uncomfortable mm -hmm. at times, you know, so you have to understand that, that sometimes because change is constant, sometimes in life, in work, you are going to have the feeling of, oh, my God, this is oh my god you know um and you have to go right i've recognized we're in an oh my god moment and i'm i know how i can feel comfortable with that mm -hmm. you know it doesn't necessarily make it go away but you've got your your gut uh mm -hmm. you know it might be tightened um however that you can face into it and manage it and then the clarity piece there's a couple of ways that you look at this sometimes you just have to understand that you're not going to get any clarity. Okay. That that's sometimes is part of it. it. It's not about the fact that, oh, I've got the word clarity here, so I can spend loads of time about getting lots and lots and lots of clarity. Mm -hmm. And you go, no, the point is, a lot of the time, you're either going to have some or not a lot. Mm -hmm. Or you have to be uh, ask a lot of good questions to find out what's the limited amount of clarity that you're going to get. So what's the boundaries that you've got to work within? Um, and then you use your strength, skills, capabilities, resilience, attitude, mindsets and behavior to work within whatever clarity that you've got. Hmm. And then the agile piece. Um, so this is where it's really heavily linked to the resilience piece. So if I talk about um, just quickly talk about another dimension around resilience, which is adaptability. Mm -hmm. So I've got the resilience wheel that I talk about, which is a build upon research. Um, and one of the dimensions of being resilient is adaptable, which is open to change. Mm -hmm. um, however, not necessarily doing the change. You're just open to it. And it's nice research that shows that those people that work upon their adaptability, openness and curiosity to the idea of doing things differently, they get into thrive. A third of their time working on adaptability, they get into thrive. 
So how that then links to agility is uh, adaptability. I'm open to change. And the more I work upon that, then I can do the agile piece, which is I can make quick decisions mm-hmm. to do a change. So mm-hmm. once again, back to the white water rafting analogy. Yeah. I'm situationally aware. I'm comfortable feeling uncomfortable. I've got clarity around this is as little as I know. And I'm ready and I'm prepared to be agile with how I'm going to steer my raft. Right. Yeah. I like it. That, that's I like it. it. Cool. Yeah, I'd never heard the uh, that that positive spin on it before. Like I said, I I was just familiar with volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Yeah, absolutely. I like, I like the I like the flip side of that. That's great. I can't uh, take credit for all. It's it's literally it's, it's things it's models that have been out there that um for me make sense to me and all of the work that I do with clients to just you know whenever you walk into a room and go um how do you feel about change. Yeah. You just get so many different responses. And then when you talk to an organization and go, how good are you at change? Yeah. You just get, that's like a can of worms. But that's yeah. when all the gold dust is of where you could go and do some good, essentially. It's interesting. I've, I've been giving a lot of thought lately in my personal and professional life about the, the understanding part, right? Being mm. comfortable, be, feeling comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, yes. and, and one of the... Um, call it an, an analogies that I've kind of latched onto that I really, that I really like about this is uh, I heard someone said that the size of the dragon that you have to slay today is going to be your new baseline for what's easy to do tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. like you're uncomfortable with it today and that's the growth. That's the growth because tomorrow it's not going to be so uncomfortable. The size of the dragon that you have to slay today is going to make you super uncomfortable. And then tomorrow it's you, you, that's, that's when you kind of step up, level up, so to speak. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it is. That does make sense to me. Oh, you're right. If I, you know, uh, attribute you, but start saying that to others, essentially. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember where you got it from, but I was, like, I was talking to Michael. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's about slaying dragons. It yeah. really is. Yeah, and yeah, the size of the dragon that you have to slay today is 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 going to be your new baseline for tomorrow. It is. It reminds me of um, one of the words that I say an awful lot as well is optimism, mm-hmm. or thinking about optimism is your route to feeling positive. Mm-hmm. So they're heavily intertwined. If you look up the dictionary definition of optimism, it uses the word positive. Okay, mm-hmm. so some people might think I'm splitting hairs. However, what I'm wanting my clients or people listening now to do is avoid the let's just be positive mantra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that doesn't work a lot of the time, you know. So um, optimism starts with grounded in reality. Yep. So actually, what's the size of the dragon? How scary is the dragon? How fiery Mm -hmm. is the dragon? Mm -hmm. Let's be real about how difficult and challenging this situation is this project is or what i'm working on um, and you're going to have that in a way that doesn't necessarily depress you or upset mm-hmm. you you know mm-hmm. you have to accept it with good grace of like this is the size of the challenge mm-hmm. then it's thinking about okay so what's my levels of resilience i've got what's my strengths what's my skills what's my experiences what are my behaviors what's my attitude what's my mindset yeah you know, what's my adaptability Mm-hmm. To go, oh, okay, I'm starting to feel hopeful that I can in, meet the size of the challenge, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and also looking at the people around you and asking the same questions. What have they got? Mm-hmm. You know, strength, skills, capabilities, and go, do you know what? I'm generally hopeful that we can face into the challenge. And then when you get that feeling of hope, you get feelings of positivity. Mm-hmm. So like that's just something that I say a lot to a lot of class, clients around. Yeah. Okay. So you're in a VUCA world, it's mad bonkers crazy, there's a lot going on, and I say, how optimistic do you feel? Mm-hmm. And wait to see what their answer is, you know? <laughs> and sometimes they go, oh, no, good question. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, actually, do you know, yeah, it is enormous, the challenge. But, ah, uh, yeah, OK, I'm feeling optimistic. And they go, no, you're, uh, OK, no, literally no optimism at all. And that's that's the, you see where the direction of the conversation then goes next to go, right then, we now either need to build your optimism or we now even need to create some optimism for you. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I think, you know, there's something, I'm I'm a very positive guy. Um, I, I believe in, I have an abundance mindset. Um, I think that, that, you know, business 99 times out of a hundred, uh, is not a zero sum game. It can, it can mm. always be a win-win for everybody. Um, and I see, I, I know exactly what you're talking about and I've seen this kind of blind optimism, optimism yeah. for the sake of being optimistic. It's almost, you know, if you'll if you'll pardon the expression it's almost it can be a bit masturbatory yes yeah you know, absolutely it's just, it's just gonna yeah disconnect yes. yeah so i i'm i'm sure you meant this but i'm i'm hearing blind positivity if you're yeah. doing optimism you won't be doing that because huh. you've you haven't got your head in the sand essentially uh -huh. so it's like and it's also it can be toxic positivity as well it can be uh -huh. some pretty horrible you know, uh, gaslighting that goes on. It's like somebody might come to him and say, can we just talk about actually just how difficult the challenge is? Mm -hmm. And then if you suddenly get piled upon it, like, oh, just shut up and be positive. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. not good. Yeah. Yeah, I think a, a, a solid grounding in reality is is nothing but healthy. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Um, Russell, what is it? What does a typical engagement with you look like when you work with with clients? Yeah, so uh, individual wise, um, it, it's it's seeing where they are on this, like you know, wading through treacle uh, or coping, surviving, thriving. It's 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 looking at that, and uh, the vast majority of the time, we will do a psychometric around their strengths. Mm -hmm. So there's lots out there, and there's one I use, Strength Scope. Um, mm -hmm. It's overseen by the British Psychological Society, because I do find a lot of time with clients that they've they haven't understood generally what their strengths are, what naturally energizes them. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the UK, uh, sort of educationally, not sure what it's like in the States, um, and also in sort of person in in one-to-ones and supervision uh, that people have with their line managers, it's literally the conversation is all about, you're good at that, so forget that. And mm -hmm. actually, these are your weaknesses, work upon those. Mm -hmm. Okay, but a strengths-based approach it sort of flips that. It goes, "What do you naturally love and enjoy doing, and do more of that?" Mm -hmm. And it builds natural resilience and natural confidence. And mm -hmm. confidence is one of the other dimensions of being resilient. Um, so, a, a lot of my clients have never had that thought about: Do I really know what my what naturally energizes me, and I naturally enjoy doing? So, there are twenty-four strengths. You do a self-assessment. Um, your own self-assessment tells you what your significant seven are and you pick your top three. So my top three are collaboration, mm -hmm. working with others, developing others, mm -hmm. coaching, <laughs> <laughs> okay. and strategic mindedness. So yeah. big picture end point, you know, out of yeah. the 24. So at the 24, there's detail. The thing that I'm energized by the least, Michael, is detail. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me to go in a room with loads of detail, it's just like you've it's like you've burst my bubble and you know I wither and die inside, you know. <laughs> so you you have strategies in place for those things that you're not energized by. But the the trick of being resilient and being at your best and facing into life challenges is generally to understand what your strengths are. Yeah. So on a one-on-one -on -one basis, that's the strengths-based approach underpins. Then we look at each individual's resilience wheel as well uh because it's got seven bits to it and and we sort of say let's work on your wheel and the and the wheel um is is it's on the website it's it's for free it's a build upon free work free research that was put out by robertson cooper and i just sort of say have the wheel as a self-assessment tool for the rest of your life about actually how you're just going to keep and maintain and build your resilience wheel because then you build your levels of resilience and actually what you used to believe was a big scary dragon one day mm -hmm. uh now becomes oh, oh it looks a bit like a you know 
uh what's the smaller version of a dragon i don't know i'm not an specialist on dragons you uh, know yes <laughs> there's, a komodo, there's a komodo dragon but they're quite poisonous so i don't know yes so the size of, of the challenge yeah. uh when you've increased your levels of resilience you won't see it as such a large one next time around yeah yeah uh, cool so and the I'm, website I'm actually... is resiliencecoach.co.uk it is yes it those, is it is for those those listening um cool um so where where are you where do you get your clients russell and how do you how do you market yourself how do you market your services yeah so um being a guest on some podcasts helps. <laughs> thank you i appreciate that absolutely <laughs> uh and so and it uh, so you, you have a website uh you know linkedin uh, mm -hmm. other social media um i luckily i'm part of a radio station so okay. i have russell's resilience radio show that goes out weekly um that's how you know other people hear about us an awful lot of word of mouth yeah um and you know blogging and youtubing and uh i also have my own podcast as well so you just have to do stuff, Michael, and yeah. there is a strategy behind it. And, yeah. you know, um, it leads to people visiting the website and getting in touch to go. Yeah. I saw this. I heard that, you know, doing speeches at conferences. It's just all of that stuff that you have to do. Yeah, love it. Love it. I want to um, I'm going to circle back to we were talking before about engagements, what engagement looks like with your clients and looking at the way that you do things and you figure out people's strengths. So once you've, once you've figured out, you know, what someone's strengths are and, and they have that kind of insight into what they're good at and, and, and what maybe they're not so good at, do you have specific, tactics or exercises that you run through with clients um, to help them implement some of this new knowledge, right? Because knowledge in, in and of itself is not, is not the end of, of the coaching game. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it isn't. It isn't. It isn't. Um, so not necessarily like um, a worksheet that they go through, not mm -hmm. that, but it is, it's connecting um, the resilience wheel and their strength scope profile with actually um, their own personal direction of travel. So yep. it's the purpose piece that comes in as well, because not, not a lot of people have talked about their purpose. Mm -hmm. So huge amounts of time, well, clients, the vast majority of time, they're at a stage of life, you know, mm -hmm. some of my other ideal clients are slightly younger than the job title of the head of It's like they're, they're earlier in their careers. Mm -hmm. uh, and other ideal clients is like they've been in some big consultancy firms and they might've been sucked up by the graduate program and they're either loving it or they think they've, they're not loving it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's decision points. So it is a case of, um, what they work upon is them clarifying what does a resilient them look like, sound like, and feel like, you know, create that picture, paint that picture, mm -hmm. motivate themselves to do it, align it to a purpose. And it's like, well, where are you now mm -hmm. in relation to that blueprint? And, mm -hmm. you know, how would you like to get there? And then that's when they either start to do things differently in their job role, how they lead their teams, how they take their leadership role, because they might actually go, come with i want to be a much better leader so i'll say okay what's your leadership purpose then mm -hmm. you might have a life purpose a leadership purpose mm -hmm. so what they work upon in between each conversation is those types of things uh to go actually what's your direction of travel um and if it, you know if it works uh in the best way possible of like somebody's come with i was wading through treacle and then you know a number of conversations with me I'm going ah oh, I have rediscovered my mojo, what enthusiasm and excites me. And I know how I'm going to get there and the steps that I'm going to take to do it. And then it's a bit more of an accountability conversation with somebody yeah. like myself. Um, and some take longer than others. Uh, but it can be slightly different. I was um, really privileged recently. There was a, a gentleman called James. It was his first year as a CEO. So I was supporting him for a full year as in his first CEO role. All the way from, you know, you know, the whole first year of everything that he needed to do and taking on this new role and creating things that a CEO has to do. Um, 
so there were all sorts of challenges along the way with that one <laughs> <laughs> you know there was an awful lot of like ah so yeah things have changed again right okay when you when you find people with different leadership purposes versus a, a life purpose do you yeah. often do you do you often find those already in alignment or do you find them out of alignment and you try to coach them to get those things in alignment what is what does that look like it's just, I, um, like I, I asked this specifically because i feel like i don't know i, I feel like part of part of purpose right a, a, like hmm. purpose is is living that you know kind of living in authenticity right and 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 i, I feel like it would be in your best interest and maybe i'm wrong call me out if i'm wrong on this but i feel like it would be in your best interest if if you're you know if you had two different purposes one for leadership and professional uh life and one for your personal life if those things were in alignment it would make it would just make more sense uh, totally it absolutely would make more sense and when they're out of alignment it is difficult for the individual yeah because then we get into the space of like well you you if you are trying to be a different person at home, in, as in the workplace, then you're yeah. going to get yourself into a pickle. Now, that's what I'm saying if you if you if your leadership right if your leadership purpose is to become the CEO and lead everybody to this great big successful business, and your life purpose is to be there for your kids and go to every single baseball game, probably can't do both, right? Because there's there's time commitments and you have to you have to make a, a commitment somewhere and you have to make sacrifices somewhere. Well, so, and they could do both. Okay. So it's not, so it's, I absolutely hear what you're saying. And it's incredibly difficult for an individual to sort of say, right, I'm going to be CEO because they're going to be sacrifices. And that's then though, um, the conversation around actually, do you know what? We need more leaders mm -hmm. who are on they want to go on the senior trajectory who also want to live a, you know, uh, an overall values life of yeah. home life is important. Sure. So I do think we are getting, we need to be getting far more to the place of um, working up through the chain through business and shouldn't be at the sacrifice of home life. Yeah. You no. Know? Um, and there, there are people that are doing that. So if they're out of alignment, um, it's more difficult to achieve and the conversation normally goes into actually do you know what this is breaking my head trying to do these do, do these two different ways i think i need to align them and then that's when yeah that's kind of what i'm saying and and it, you know to circle back to what we were talking about a little bit at the beginning of the podcast about just being grounded in reality yes. you can't you can't lead a you know a fortune 500 company and be a stay-at-home mom no Right. <laughs> just as, as much as, as that sounds like it would be nice. Um, so I, yeah. Well, I, I know I immediately went, no, I suppose, but that, that immediate like, well, no, you can't is informed by too much of what has gone before. Now I'm oh. of the view of let's challenge that assumption sure. is, you know, I, I'm of the view of, cause I do, um, by, accent or design a lot of my clients are women yeah. you know um i did a piece of work many years ago about women in business just by a coincidence um and i think as a consequence of that just how i present myself sometimes I do have a lot of female clients so it's how it um it's wrong i think huh. to keep um accepting that uh you know phrase of like you can't have a you know you can't be a stay-at-home mom well you can't actually be a stay-at-home mom and a ceo although you might have an online business and do it right um but yeah i'm, I'm supposed just splitting hairs here it's like you can be a ceo and actually um be a family person sure i you mean know? yeah i run i run my company and i'm essentially a stay-at-home dad um, yeah, I watch I watch my daughter about half time, and my wife works works half time outside of the house, um, and so I can speak with great clarity on the difficulty of, <laughs> of making that work. Um, 
So I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just it's interesting. It's an interesting you know uh, line of questioning. I think maybe maybe the right question is you know just how how can we get close to that? How can we do better? Yes. How can we do better? Absolutely, absolutely. How can we get close to that? You know what? Well, I think um, the vast majority of the time, why people feel as though they are struggling is they don't believe they have options and choices. Right. Yeah. So one of the roles I have found as a coach is to enable the person in front of me to understand and believe and realize that they have options and choices. Yeah. yeah. And, and then that immediately the, the fact that they have options and choices quite often feels um, enlightening or, you know, lifting of mm -hmm. spirit. Um, yeah. Yeah. So don't yeah. close yourself down to options and choices. Yeah. Yeah. I think to, to a degree you, you, are able to create your own future right and and kind of design your own reality again feet grounded in reality <laughs> yeah 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 totally totally so um and and it is it's a it's a i've often been accused wrong word or the feedback of like you, you leave in you live in cloud cuckoo land russell huh. and i'm like well no <laughs> <laughs> I do I do live in the real world. I understand totally that all of these challenges that you're facing. Yeah. And what I'm trying to you know do is support you to understand that uh, it doesn't have to be this way. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Back to that kind of uh, abundance mindset. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Because we just get stuck. We just get stuck in a rut yeah. uh, so much of the time. Um that's why there's just so much opportunity I find working with clients to, to have these types of conversations. And, you know, it's incredible uh, that, that uh, a fairly common piece of feedback that I get is, um, do you know what? I don't have uh, the conversations I have with you, Russell, I don't have with anybody else. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, that sounds good. I know, so I go, is that a good thing? They go, yeah, 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 it is. Absolutely. It's definitely, it's definitely a good thing, you know? So um, it's often, it's always coaching is thought provoking. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, and, but that's, that's where it's just so enjoyable and why I love doing it and why I never stop learning. And um, I am looking forward to, for the rest of my career, discovering all sorts of new things about myself and others and things I thought and the things that I will change and the things that I will adapt, you know? Very good. Very good, man. Um, this is great. Uh, Russell, I, I, do, I do want to be respectful of your time. Um, is there anything that you would like to chat about that we have not had an opportunity to touch upon yet? Anything I've missed? I don't. No, not not in my opinion. No, uh, just please, everybody, remember this idea of resilience is springing forward with learning, mm -hmm. and actually, the only addition will be on that. To be able to spring forward with learning, the other thing I always say is it needs to be able to get into the habit mm -hmm. from all of life's experiences, whether good or not so good, to pause mm -hmm. and reflect. Um, where you can do your learnings, but you've got to recuperate and re-energize. So there's a lot of words beginning with the letter R, as in resilience, reflect, recuperate, re-energize, but they're there on purpose. And amazingly, I designed it from birth because I'm called Russell as well. So it was meant to be this way, essentially. Um, and, and remarkable as well. <laughs> yes, exactly. Remarkable indeed. So yeah, um, and ask yourself to each in your reflections. I get all of my clients to ask themselves two questions. And so from your recent experiences, what do you want to keep doing because it's worked? Mm -hmm. Build on your strengths. And what do you want to leave behind? Because it didn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just another thing to just try and leave listeners with of like, get into the habit of, you know, you've got to pause. Even if you had a great time and worked on these brilliant projects and you played to your strengths, you'll be nice tired. So you need to pause and recuperate and reflect from that. And But if you worked on something which didn't play to your strengths and was a real challenge, you absolutely must recuperate and re-energize and reflect from that as well. Um, so spring forward with learning is the um, sentence that I always say. Love it. I love it. Russell, where can our viewers and listeners connect with you online? 
Yeah, so uh, LinkedIn, the Resilience Coach, Russell Harvey, and website, which you did allude to before. So theresiliencecoach.co.uk, you know. Um, but it put in the Resilience Coach anywhere, and I'll crop up, essentially. Um, that's how they connect with us. Um, and that's how you can get in touch and details and emails and submission forms on websites. So it's all there. Beauty. I love it. Russell Harvey, thank you so much for making time to chat with me today, man. I appreciate it. This has been a great conversation. Thank you. My absolute pleasure, Michael. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And as always, thank you to our viewers and listeners. You guys are fantastic. This podcast is, of course, nothing without you guys. If you got uh, any value out of this, uh, number one, be sure to check out Russell uh, online. Shoot him an email. Go to his website. Look him up on LinkedIn. Um, give this a like, uh, subscribe, do all the things that you're supposed to do. And if you know somebody that you think might get some value out of this from Russell's gold nuggets of wisdom, please share this with them as well. Um, we appreciate it. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. We will see you guys next time. Take care.